Okay, electronegativity and bonding. Here in this lesson, we're going to consider how two atoms share or transfer electrons when near each other. In the first diagram here, I have sodium, you'll recognize the one valence electron, and chlorine, seven valence electrons from group 17. So Lewis symbols of both sodium and chlorine atoms. Here I have two hydrogen atoms with their one valence electron each. And here I have a hydrogen atom and a neighboring oxygen atom with six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the question becomes, when the nuclei of these atoms are competing for the electrons between the two nuclei, are these electrons being shared equally or perhaps unequally? Or is one of those atoms so much stronger than the other that it will completely attract the electron to itself? And so we need a way of determining that when we look at the elements that are involved. So the concept of electronegativity is really that idea of the strength or tug of war strength, if you will. The ability of an atom to attract electrons to ins itself when involved in a bond. Now on our test reference sheet, you will find atomic number, average atomic masses, and also electronegativity values. So these reference values will be provided to you during quizzes and tests. For example, the electronegativity of sodium, you'll see here, is 0 0.9, and chlorine, 3.2, as well as hydrogen at 2.2, and oxygen over here at 3.4. So let's think about a, an atom's ability to attract electrons to itself. So what would the trend be? Do you think larger atoms will be better able to attract electrons to themselves when involved in bonding, or smaller atoms? Hopefully you're thinking smaller atoms, thinking of the ability of that nucleus to attract a nearby electron. And so the trend then, knowing that atoms are getting larger as we move down the group, means that that electronegativity is decreasing. So in fact, if I show an arrow going up, this would be the trend in electronegativity. So here's where we have low, in fact, the lowest electronegativity. Right, and we won't consider the noble gases, typically not involved in bonding with their stability. And so we know atoms get smaller as you go to the right of the period. And so there's a general increase in electronegativity as you move upwards and towards the right in the periodic table. And so fluorine is in fact the most electronegative atom. The electronegativity of fluorine is 4.0. And that 4.0 value is essentially the top of the scale. So all atoms are going to have, or all elements will have electronegativities less than 4.0. So you can see that chlorine at 3.2 is kind of close to that 4.0, whereas oxygen a little further away, and sodium certainly at 0 0.9, much lower. So remember, this value, this electronegativity, indicates how strong that electron will be in a tug of war for electrons between two atoms. So when we look at the sodium and chlorine, we see that chlorine at 3.2 is quite a bit more electronegative than the sodium. These two hydrogen atoms have an equal strength, equal ability to attract electrons. And here in the case of hydrogen and oxygen, we see that they're both on the higher side. Um, however, 3.4 is definitely still greater than 2.2. So in fact, what really is significant then is not just the electronegativity of a particular atom, but we need to consider the electronegativity of both atoms involved in the bonding. And that's where the electronegativity difference comes in. So the significance here, this delta symbol here, just like delta y over delta x, you've seen in math, this means difference. So the electronegativity difference, that's what's key. How do you know if you're going to win a tug of war until you know who your opponent is, right? So if you can see that your opponent has relatively the same strength as you do, you think that, boy, this is probably going to be a tie. But if you see your opponent, you know that opponent is much, much stronger than you, you can anticipate that you might end up letting go of the rope completely as they pull it out of your hands. So the black line here is showing a scale running from zero up to some positive value where it represents the electronegativity difference. 
This value of 1.7 is significant because that's the point where when the difference is greater than 1.7, we consider the bonding to be ionic in nature, which means there's a, a transfer of electrons. We end up with two distinct electron clouds where ions of opposite charge will attract. Less than 1.7, we call that a covalent bond, meaning the sharing of electrons. That sharing can either be very equal which is a pure covalent bond called a nonpolar covalent bond, or it can be unequal, a polar covalent bond. Typically 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 is kind of the boundary where if it's less than that, if the electronegativity difference is less than that, we'll consider it a nonpolar bond. Greater than that, but less than 1.7, we're in the polar covalent bond region. And as I said before, greater than 1.7, the sharing is so unequal that in fact it's not even sharing anymore there's a transfer of electrons you'll see in the diagrams that i drew here the positives represent the two nuclei that are of the atoms involved in the bond and i'm trying to show an equal symmetrical distribution here of the electrons around these nuclei whereas here you'll see so this is our nonpolar covalent bond equal sharing when the sharing is unequal, you'll see that there's definitely a shift in the electron density towards the more electronegative atom. We use symbols to indicate that. So the lowercase d, lowercase delta, looks like this. And so the end of the bond that is more electronegative will be the partially negative region. And the partially positive region will be at the end of the less electronegative atom. So this symbolism here means partially negative and over here partially positive. Okay, in the case of the ionic bond, we see the distinct electron clouds and so in fact one of these ions will be a positive ion and one of them will be negative depending on which way the electrons transferred. So classifying electronegative or classifying bonds as being either nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic really comes down to a comparison of the electronegativities. And so I'm asking you in these three examples here to classify each bond. So this requires looking up your electronegativity values, subtracting those, and then classifying as either nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic bonds. So take a look at your test reference sheet. You should have that uh, in your notebook. So look up the electronegativities of hydrogen, nitrogen, potassium, and fluorine, and subtract for the two that are involved and predict what type of bond will form. You can pause the video, do that, and then check back. Okay, and so you'll see here that I really didn't even need to do this calculation. Knowing that the uh, atoms are of the same element means that they're going to have the same electronegativity values, and therefore the difference will be zero. So. I wouldn't even take the time to do that, but I showed the calculation here. So seeing as the electronegativity difference is zero, we're falling into the nonpolar covalent bond description. For nitrogen and hydrogen, the difference ended up being 0 0.8, so somewhere in this region, again, the polar covalent region. And for potassium and fluorine, at 3.2, the difference is quite significant. We're definitely greater than 1.7. And so we have an ionic bond forming between potassium and fluorine. And so the potassium and fluoride ions would be formed. Transfer of electrons here, unequal sharing of electrons here, and equal sharing, relatively equal, with a difference of zero, certainly equal sharing of the electron pair here. So bonding is a continuum, so just think of these nuclei as attracting or pulling on the electrons being shared. And as that difference becomes greater than zero, we start to have one of the atoms better able at attracting electrons to itself. In this picture, you can see that it's the atom on the right that's pulling the electron density closer. Eventually, one atom will be, when the difference is greater than 1.7, one atom, the nonmetal, will have been so much better at pulling electrons to itself that it will have formed the negative ion, leaving a cation uh, to pair with it. Okay, and that's it for electronegativity and bonding.